Hey everyone, welcome back to The Pale Beyond, I'm Disturbing Puppet. So we, I think, are going to be moving camp here quite soon. I think that's sort of the plan. So we have moved to the next camp. Um, I don't think we can look at the map here at this point. No, we do have a few people out, so we've got uh, one soldier, or one sailor who's injured, and we have one of the engineers, I think, who has frostbite, yeah. Other than that, we're doing fairly well, uh, except that we're running out of resources, of course, which is going to be a problem. Part of the reason why we might be moving, um, I think we have to go to the hunting menu to actually see the map, so I can't really see anything, I don't think. Uh, temperature is getting colder, which is going to be a problem because we're running out of fuel to keep the furnace going. Uh, not sure if moving camp's going to help with that, but we'll see what we can do here. After a hard morning dragging the boats, the crew come across deeper snow ahead. Captain, snow on the ice is getting deeper. We'll need to find a better path before dragging the whole crew through it. I'll be happy to take up the reins. Best way to leave that to one of your scouts, Mr. Darling. The ice behind us is encroaching. We needn't lag behind a man with a cane. The old lamp isn't that bad, Templeton. It's bad enough. Time is of the essence. Very well. Can't go wrong with my team anyway. Any one of them are capable of finding the path on the ice. Captain, if you want to judge the course yourself, you should go ahead with them. Ill-advised. We don't know what lies ahead. Best to not take any unnecessary risks. Hmm. I feel like the scouting party should be fine. If there's other issues, we can kind of keep control of it. So I think Templeton's actually right here. Templeton's right. I'll stay back with the rest of the party. Kirk didn't like that, though, which is kind of interesting. Choose a scout to send forward. Can we zoom out here a little bit? Uh, okay, we can zoom out a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, not looking super great, is it? Um, so we packed up everything, hopefully, on some boats, which we're dragging. Uh, at least the ice isn't too like rough at this point, but uh, yeah, probably not great. All right. We have all our scouts in good shape. They're all ice savvy, so I think that's good no matter what. Let's just pick Quinsley, that's fine. Uh, we can't assign more people, so good to go. Quilsy, scout ahead and see if you can find us a safe pass to the next float. Quilsy nods to you and Kurt before trudging ahead. I think I hear something. Stop. The eggshell surface of the flows erupt, revealing a large, slimy creature, mouth agape with files of razor-sharp teeth. Expectant. Well, it's a leopard seal. Leopard seal! Well, we have plenty of things. He's big? Um, this is for small... that's like medium. He's large, so let's go bolt action. Grab the rifle and steady it as you aim towards the beast, barreling toward Quilzy. <laughs> The beast continues unhindered. Fear mixes with snow, freezing Quilzy in place. Uh, we have an idea of distance here. Kind of massive. We should be able to get multiple shots off. Go ahead and fire. You crack the rifle and the bullet flies, piercing the flesh of the sea leopard, but the beast continues its charge despite its injuries. The animal's gaining speed, closing the distance. That's kind of weird. I think they'd be kind of slow on the ice. Uh, reload. Jam the bolt back and forth, reloading the weapon. Should just take a second. There's now about 10 yards between Quilzy and the beast. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can wait any further. Fire. Shot connects. The beast drops lifeless on the ice. Hopefully that's food we can get. Inches from Quilzy, shaken but alive. Oh, absolutely harvested for food. It takes two dog sledding teams to drag the creature onto stable ice. After processing and packing the sea leopard's meat, a trove of undigested fish is found inside its stomach cavity. Uh, I don't think we want to use it as rations, but we could feed the fish to the dogs, maybe? We don't know how viable the fish are, better left to the dogs. Cordell claims their digestive systems can handle the meat better than us. The dogs seem pleased with their treat. Alright, half digested fish, awesome. Alright. Now at the second camp, on to week 12. Alright, so that was week 11, so we hunted elephant seals, um, we got something with freezing, Tashi was wounded right on the elephant seal hunt. Somebody has frostbite, somebody has freezing, okay. 
Captain Shaw personal log. A new camp has erected on the ice flow. Has been erected on the ice flow. The prospect of land is still far off from here. Hmm. Not sure which direction we were heading either is the other thing. Were we heading towards like the wreck of the Viscount? Or were we heading towards the edge of the ice flow? I'm not really sure. Like, I think winter's approaching here in the southern hemisphere, so um, it's summer's pretty much over. We're probably into, well, it's not even even, so it's probably late summer kind of thing. It's not giving me dates or anything. Crew were ambushed by a leopard seal whilst moving camp. It was fortunate that all managed to escape with their lives. We survived because we were prepared. It was quick thinking and the appropriate resources that won out the day for the crew. That vigilance is to be kept up at all times, lest the crew meet with a true disaster. That leopard seal was but a warning of the dangers that rest on the ice. By all estimate, it appears that summer has arrived on the ice, a prime occasion for hunting, that doesn't make sense, uh, and a comparable respite from the truly freezing temperatures, the worst of which are yet to come. With the arrival of summer comes the promise of winter. Hmm. We must not lose sight of what lies ahead, we must prepare for winter. The long night winter will prove the greatest challenge to the crew. The crew must be ready, lest they be torn apart by unlivable temperatures, a lack of food, and the harsh cutting blizzards yet to come. Yeah, the problem is going to be heat, really. If we can do some hunting, we might be able to hold on for a bit. Temperance is gone. Captain Hunt is missing. Tracks were found in the snow. A frozen coat. Really? Okay. Proof that if nothing else, Hunt and his group were able to survive beyond the boiler incident aboard the Temperance. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if they're out here somewhere or we'll just come across their bodies. I have to commend Hunt. He's much hardier than first expected. Rufus Hunt further proves himself to be a man of many surprises. To have made it as far as he had, it almost fills the crew with hope in regards to their own chances. If Hunt and his band of deserters are able to carry on against the elements, then that should be the truth for the rest of the crew in turn. Temperance went under, finally consumed by the ice. She'll be missed. The old vessel had become a home for the crew, even when trapped in the ice. It served as a constant presence. A monument of the world we traveled from, the world that we left behind. To see it go weighed heavily upon the crew. Alright, got all kinds of stuff here going on. Uh, we might want to deal with the requests first before we do anything else. Um, so here... I just want to see where we're at. Okay, so we have kind of a whole new area. Um, it looks like we're in the exact same spot <laughs> to me. Like, it looks exactly the same. Now, we do have research done, so we could potentially go and uh, do special hunts if we need to. So we started off there. Yeah, it seems like we're kind of in the same spot. Like, we really didn't move very far, it looks like. But we have a whole new set of areas to scout and stuff. So... That hopefully will help out. Uh, yeah, we've got people to talk to. Food's going to be an issue. Heating is more of an issue. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, what's going on here? We have random people who want to talk. Just kind of looking what we can listen to. Cordell, of course. All right, yeah, I think we'll deal with our normal requests first, because sometimes that affects everything else that we're going to do. Um, decorum has dropped a lot, which is a bit surprising. I think we were pretty good before. Captain. This territory of ice we find ourselves on, it would seem we have our pick of the litter. The ice is teeming with life, life that has never encountered our lack of the past. We'll be able to hunt to our heart's content. Yeah, I don't know about, like, moving on to an actual island. We're probably better off on the ice for a bit. Yeah, I don't know if we want to get, like, comfortable. Like, I can see kind of either one of these potentially... Yeah, 
Yeah, we can't afford to get too comfortable on the ice. Indeed. We'll not be able to stay here forever. Kurt has left me his assessment of the coming dangers. The ice is not stable. Put simply, we have the dead ice encroaching behind us. And the risk of a pressure ridge bubbling up and forming ahead of us. Oh, okay, that's a problem. We cannot stay for too long lest we find ourselves trapped here. Still, that is a worry for another time. For now, our main concern is the crew. What of the crew? Your time as captain of this expedition has surpassed that of Captain Hunt. But that is not the case in the eyes of all. Sailor loyalty runs deep in their veins. Take the Stoke brothers, for instance. They voted against you, they still speak of Hunt as the captain, and refuse that moniker on you. Every song that Elder One plays in his accordion, their traditional songs of the sea folk, is loyalty to Hunt as clear as day. I would be careful around those two. And that is indeed in... And that is indeed is one... That's bizarre. Insubordinate with... A, okay, insubordinate. I thought insubordination. <laughs> and that is indeed is one insubordinate with enough pull to lead the crew astray. Duly noted, I'll be careful. I'm not that concerned, honestly. I'm simply stating what we should look out for. Regardless, you have some requests to deal with. They're waiting outside. Okay, take requests. Yeah, we'll do that. Well, actually, advanced time, which sometimes it doesn't do. So yeah, I'm toward, I wonder if I should have done everything else first. Um, yeah, it seems like I've been doing this first and it's been fine, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, Cordell. Captain Shaw. This area is teeming with life. Naive life at that. These creatures have never seen humans before. They do not even know to run. Some will even approach out of curiosity. In my opinion, we should be engaging in hunts as often as possible while we can. Absolutely agreed. Agreed. Thank you, Cordell. Cordell exits. Yeah, let's talk to Junior. Well, despite it all, we managed to land ourselves a hefty piece of meat. A leopard seal and the fish in its belly. It's up to you how we prepare it, Shaw. Feasting on the thing would be nice. I think he would like that, but I don't think we should be wasting it. Let's save the meat till it's needed. Crew will be disappointed to hear that, Shaw. Decorum goes down, not a big deal. They had their hopes on tearing into the damn thing. And our scientist, Mr. Gloss. Captain, I have this bottle of wine in my personal stores. My wife and I plan to enjoy it on our trip home, but it seems that's much further out than we first believed. So we thought, why not share it with the crew? Ring in the new camp proper. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, we could add it to the rations. But I think if we're shearing it anyway, it's kind of like it's added to the rations anyway. Um, I think, yeah, that's uh, kind of a, a nice gift, so let's do that. Excellent idea, thank you. Maybe that'll improve decorum again. Agreed. A little drink will help raise spirits, pardon the pun. Yeah, we got some decorum, some loyalty there. Okay, if we head out, is everything still... No, a bunch of stuff's gone. Okay, that's irritating. There's a whole bunch of conversations and stuff we missed out on there. So, yeah, I guess if it's got the um, time clock thing on it, we have to be a bit careful. Okay. So, we missed out on a bunch of stuff. That sucks. Where's the doctor? Is he kind of here? Yeah. So we have some people we can assign here, I think. Is there anything I can do for the crew? Med Bay, we've got somebody injured. Yeah, so you head in and then somebody else was freezing. Yeah, frostbite. I think that's everybody. Yeah, so there's just the two, Injured and Frostbite. So yeah, we'll do that. You guys need to rest. So we can deal with two people having a problem at a time. 
don't have anybody really need to worry about there, so that's fine. Okay. So we'll send out hunting parties and scouts and stuff. Check on the kennels here. Feed fish to the dogs. We don't have any fish, that's fine. Pet the dogs while we're here, of course. Happy doggos. Alright. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's unfortunate I should have paid more attention to the fact that we have the clock. It's been a couple of weeks since I've actually recorded any of this, so um, unfortunately we kind of missed out on some conversations there. Scouting-wise, we have scouts. So we're going to send the scouts out. See what we've got. All right, so we have penguins here. More penguins. And we have some crab eater seals there. So the crab eater seals are going to provide me a bit more. We can do one hunting expedition right now. Uh, I think we have some seal left over. We also should have the leopard seal probably in stocks. So yeah, we don't have much else to do. So let's send out a hunt. Who do we want to send? I'm not doing anything with the scientists, so I might as well have them help out with the hunt. We want to send like the maximum number of people possible. Uh, we'll keep the other engineer here just in case. We'll just send out whoever. How about... Yeah, two Johns we'll keep here. Add you as well. Okay. Mr. Zack, Mr. Gloss, Mrs. Gloss, and Cavity are marked down to hunt for the week. And that's all we can do. We don't have enough dogs to send anybody else out to do anything else, but we did a decent amount of scouting, so we know we have some penguins, but they don't provide a ton of food, really. Uh, our problem is actually going to be heat here very, very soon. I don't know why the map keeps moving when I... Okay, there we go. We'll zoom in and it's fine. All right. Uh, unfortunately, heat is a bit of a problem. You're just going to stand there and give us something to burn. Feed the furnace. All we really have is, what, four lumber left. That's it. So, I feel like we really can't afford to do more than, like, burn a little bit of lumber each day. We're not going to get anywhere near where we need to. So everyone's going to start getting cold here, unfortunately. So we're at 31. I don't know what we need. But that's probably all we're going to be able to do. Push pot. What do we have for food? So I think we need... We've got 25, so I think we need 50. So we do have you. Cures demoralization. Oh, okay. That's cool. Great source of blubber. So yeah, all we really have are some elephant seals. We're good to burn, actually. We've got some crappy food we don't really want to use unless it's an emergency. We've got ale for demoralization. We might need to rely on that at some point. Um, yeah, nobody's really demoralized, so I think we're okay. We'll throw some elephant seals in. We have enough there, I think, to just... That'll feed everybody. Be fine. That's a good chunk of food. That's like half the food we need for a day. Yeah, nobody's uh, malnourished, so that's why we're not getting anything extra from the spice crates. So if people are malnourished, we, spice crates actually give us a bit of a bonus. Yeah, the temperature is going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's a shame we missed out on some conversations there earlier. 
I'm a bit disappointed by that. I don't like the way this moves. Why do you keep bobbing up when I move it down? Alright, unfortunately we're just going to call everybody for dinner and see what happens. Crew have their meal. Dinner shared and stories are traded. Okay, so now we have some conversations, some stuff to listen to. We'll listen in on everybody, then we'll kind of go from there. Who's talking over here? Two Johns. That was definitely Joe's coat we found, wasn't it? You think they're still out there? Wouldn't be surprised. Hunt's tough for an old man. We don't know how long that jacket was there. Don't get your hopes up. Captain, tell them not to get carried away. Hmm. We've survived this long. Why couldn't they? Even Captain Shaw thinks so. Well, he didn't like that. That's, um, our... The brother of the cook. I can't remember what his name is. Junior, I think. Don't encourage them. Nah, that jacket means something. Could mean Joe froze to death. Well, don't you have a sunny disposition. I'm being realistic. True, people with uh, hypothermia often do sort of pull their clothes off as kind of the very end stage. Hey, it's only minus 31 Celsius. That's kind of nuts. Star. Timmy, don't be wandering off. I'm fine, da. Stick close to me. You don't know what's out there. Why is it coming from, like, here? That's kind of weird. Where are you guys even at? Yeah, they're over here. It's odd that the ear was way over there. I said I'm fine. Okay, so he's wandering off, causing problems. Great. Super helpful. Look a bit shaken, Chief. Worried about another attack from some beastie? Aye, more worried about one of them getting onto this boiler. If it's wrecked, we're done for. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Why would a leopard seal attack a furnace? That's bizarre. Uh, think we should have overnight watch then? I'll handle that. Of course you will. So that might be something we're going to have to start looking at too. Uh, who do we have over here? That's what, Cordell? Or Gloss. Lost in thought? Our encounter with the wildlife has left me rather perturbed. We can only be thankful that no one was harmed. Indeed. Well, that's kind of crazy. Look at that. I don't think leopard seals are that big. <laughs> like, that's an insanely huge leopard seal. <laughs> like, that's the biggest leopard seal ever. I mean, they, they can get pretty big, but I don't, they're, like, not that fat. Like, that's a crazy fat leopard seal. Um, alright. Grimly. Shaw. Heard the photographer call my songs poetry earlier. Never thought about being a poet. I can't even write. Writing isn't a requirement. Poetry is oral, too. Well, they might as well sing at that point. Are poets just lazy musicians? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> or frustrated musicians, maybe. So there's our stockpile of stuff, it looks like. Not that we really have this much stuff. It's like some penguins. Uh, smaller? No, those are... Emperor penguins, canned stuff, fish, not that we have any fish, coal, we have no coal. Templeton out here. Captain, you didn't call me here so frequently. You receive your updates each day. You should focus on the crew or your own rest. Yet you do not decline my invitation. True. This is hardly a direct order, is it? Well, I'm afraid you have me there. Very well then, what do you wish to discuss? Apparently nothing. Alright. So, Kurt, Junior, Hammond, they probably don't really have anything to say because they're not highlighted. 
Overheard some crew talking about how they missed proper food back on land. The grateful bastards should have smacked them. Uh, I can't blame them, though. I've been out here quite a while. Complaints are ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with your food. I know that. As do they, I bet. So we got his loyalty there. Nice. Still, they miss something. That's fair. For me, it's the sea I miss. Yeah, I can see things like, you know, potatoes. Could be a bit of an issue. Missing starches and stuff. Evening. That rescue ship better be coming. Don't trust the benefactor to follow through. Haven't you worked with them before? Aye, and they paid me well when all goes right. They've always been the type to weigh their purse before anything. That's not a good sign. Okay, we'll talk to Cordell. Have you ever attended the theater, Captain? It's a luxury I have not indulged in quite some time. A good ten years at least. Uh, I've seen a few plays in my time. That's good to know. Perhaps we can trade experiences at some time. Enjoying the craft of the theater. This is quite the escape, Captain. A shame that is a luxury we cannot carry with us on the ice. That's something that some of those crews, uh, Arctic Exploration, I know at least to the Franklin Expedition, they actually had, like, costumes and stuff that they brought with them because they figured there'd be a lot of downtime, people being bored, so they actually had, like, stuff to stage plays. Um, on the ship, just to kind of keep people busy and occupied. Kurt, Nutley, and Kasha are talking. You make your way towards the main camp, approaching Kurt as he speaks to Nutley. Well, it's not that I find use in it. I understand, I know the struggle of having so much pressure on you at a young age. So, you're saying you were nervous when you were my age? No, of course not. I was a six foot five inch hooker in rugby. But of course I can empathize. You approach and you notice Kasha following close behind you. A few steps back with some hesitation. Kurt's eyes catch you. He calls the both of you over. Ah, oh, Captain Shaw, I was just helping our good doctor. Our first trip out onto the ice left him shaken, and I'm set to calm his spirits. I feel like Nutley, pretty much any time I talk to him, he gets upset, so I don't know if I, like, is he going to get upset I don't mention him or acknowledge him, or is it better off if I just move on? Uh, this is kind of minimizing, this is sort of saying he's a weirdo, something like that. Let's just go with Kurt, you haven't spoken to Kasha before, she's quite the fan. Well, there's no need to say that, Captain. Oh, is that so? Kurt smiles as he puffs out his chest with confidence. Happy to hear of a fan aboard the crew. Well, fan sounds childish. I've simply followed your career for a long time. Ah, no need to be modest. I've encountered many a fan in my time. That must explain your habit of snapping photos of myself from a distance. Kasha shakes her head. That's not it. Your stature simply makes for more impactful images. It's the same with Nutley and his constant look of abject terror. That makes for good photos? They look amazing. It's great work. Keep it up. Um, thank you? Let us not sell our good doctor short. I'm sure that with time we'll feature in images with a stature rivaling my own. Nutley stares at the floor. I probably don't have it in me, not compared to the rest of the crew. The rest? Yes, look at someone like Hammond rescuing the boiler, how Kasha covered the plagues in the streets, and you with your famous expeditions. What do I have? Kasha steps forward into the conversation. Is this some kind of jape? You're a doctor. You perform surgery. That's brave enough as it is. Oh, thank you. You're a trained surgeon. None of the rest of us can say that. That's true. Nutley, you're a valuable part of the crew. I am? Right. Yes, I am. Thank you, Captain Shaw. Ah, uh, we're all doing a good job pulling our weight out here. Nutley returns to his tent as Kurt begins to share stories by the campsite with Kasha. The young journalist is keenly taking notes. 
Yeah, as much as she disliked the fact that I brought that up, she seems fine. Yeah, I'm surprised Cordell didn't want to talk, or Hammond didn't want to talk about um, setting up a watch or anything for the furnace. Can't tend to the furnace if you're yabbing to you. <laughs> if I'm yabbing to you. Like, yabbing? Is that a variant of, like, yapping? I would assume so. All right, well, that's all we can really do. Uh, maybe check in on Kurt by himself. Evening, Shaw. We've been here quite a while, haven't we? Longest I've been on the ice, no doubt. What was your previous record? Nowhere close, not even a month. If you stay this long and make it out. Apologies, Captain, didn't mean to cast a dark cloud. Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. We are doing okay. Could be better, could be a whole lot worse. Yeah, I'm concerned about the heat here once we go through another day. Um, but what else are we going to do? Crew member will be cured of malnourishment. Two crew members will develop freezing. So yeah, we're fine on food for fuel. So half is one per crew member, which would be 25. We didn't even do that, I don't think. I wish it would show me the numbers here. It would actually be kind of nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to kind of deal with it. So freezing is fine. Frostbite is where we start running into trouble. So decorum's gone down. Okay, Mr. Zack, Mr. Gloss, Mrs. Gloss and Cavity return from hunting with five crab eater seals. Dogs arrested. Mr. Gloss got freezing. Cavity got freezing. Tashi cured of wounds and freezing. Dick was cured of frostbite. Dick is now freezing. So, yeah, not great. Lefty is now freezing. Alright, all the dogs are free. Everyone is available. Uh, we just have some people who are getting very cold. But there's not really a whole lot I can do about that, unfortunately. So what we'll do, um, we'll check on stuff before we go into the request tent. But we're going to call it there. Just kind of going on one week per video. So next time we'll come back and continue. Decorum's holding. Heat is a major problem. Food, we're sort of holding on. We've got four. Actually, how much did we get? Five crab eater seals provides only 30. That's not enough. We need a lot more than that. So the crab eater seals just aren't providing enough. So we kind of have to go with the leopard seal and the crab eater seals to get through the week. But then we're once again kind of out of food, which is a bit of a problem. But yeah, we'll hold off uh, and uh, continue from week 13 next time. So I've been Disturbing Puppet. This has been the Pale Beyond. Thanks for coming by. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Until then, have a good one.